In this video we want to talk about product and service specification and standards. Product development is the process of creating new and improved products. It's product development. It's developing newness. It's innovating the product. It's perhaps bringing a new radical design into production. But one which is targeted on meeting customer requirements. An organization must take part in new product development to remain competitive and ensure customers are satisfied. That's the way of the world. We are constantly looking for new products as customers and competitors to organizations are constantly engaged in research and development and new product development. So if companies are going to maintain their position in the market they must also develop new products. They must do so to remain competitive and to maintain their position in the market. During the development stage a range of activities takes place for example research and development, uh, looking at the external market, look at it, looking at the, the processes and the requirements of the market looking at economic analysis, looking at uh, the framework within which the product must compete, looking at the economy, looking at uh, disposable incomes, looking at international competition and factors that are affecting globalization and possible competition from abroad. Also looking at product reviews, whether the product is fashionable or it's likely to remain desirable in the eyes of the consumer, what new developments uh, are taking place within the, the area, what new product developments are, are coming in because of new discoveries or new inventions or innovations. So the whole development process for a new product is complex. It must take a lot of factors into account. Product specification and standards are defined to ensure quality and customer satisfaction. Having settled on a product, the product must be good quality. It must be perceived as having good quality by the customers. This will enhance the, the marketing effort. The, the marketing section within businesses will find it easier to deal with customers because the product is good quality and it's seen as good quality. So customer satisfaction must be factored in right throughout the process and customer satisfaction starts with the time in which the order is placed right through to the delivery and after sales service. Now the product specification, well a product specification ensures that the product meets customer expectations. The whole idea is to meet customers' expectations. If customers' expectations are not met, the customers will turn against the product. There will be less sales and hence less revenue for the organization. And even the position of the organization within the market may be, uh, may be suspect. It, 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 may not, it may not last. It may go out of business. The onus is on the organization to meet customers' expectations, expectations in terms of product design, functionality, price, quality. So the product specification should be matched against customers' expectations. And to that end, the marketing section of a business should try to determine what the customers' expectations are. What do the customers think is important? and try to design a product that, that meets those requirements. The specification is derived directly from the research stage of product development. Uh, when a new product is being proposed it's important that the organization conduct exploratory research. It may do this by uh, sampling techniques, by uh, questioning likely customers or it could have focus groups inviting people into let's say a local hotel and uh, asking their opinion about products and and so on. 
So it's important that the organization collects feedback about the proposed product before it commits itself to spending large sums of money developing a product that perhaps no one wants. The research stage identifies the need for a product, its purpose, design and quality standards. It's important to listen to potential customers about what they want, what they would like to see, what's the design, what are the quality standards, how long will the product last, what's the value for money, what's the after sales service, what's the, uh, the customer support that's been offered. What are the warranties? It depends on the product, but it's important that the, the views of the potential customers are taken into account before a lot is invested in developing a new product. A product specification is a statement that defines the product, its purpose and requirements. So the specification should clearly set out what the product is, what are its what, what's its purpose, what does it do, and what is required to make the product. So the product specification is the result of the research activity. It's the feedback from the potential customers and it's working that feedback into a specification. What should the product be? What should its design be? What, are its, what functionality should the product have? what services does it render, what's its purpose and what's needed to make it. So a specification should include the following, the product details, again as I said based on research, based on what potential customers say about the product, its functions and its user instructions. If it's a technical piece of equipment for the home, for example, it should come with clear instructions. It should be easy to use. Um, it could be electrical. So what are its electrical requirements? Uh, what issues are associated with the electrics in the, in the product? What does it look like? Is it attractive? Does it meet contemporary design requirements? Does it fit in with the lifestyles of people today? Is it easy to use? Is it light and portable? Is it, is it powerful? What are its environmental credentials? Does it, does it meet environmental standards? Is it, is it green in, in the proverbial sense of the word? And what are its legal requirements in terms of safety and uh, the, the extent to, me, to, to which it meets what it says it is going to deliver. To what extent does it conform to what it says? What about health and safety? Is it safe to use? Is it dangerous when there are children present? Uh, uh, what issues are likely to arise from the use of this product? Is it potentially dangerous in any particular circumstance. Now the standards and procedures, well a product standard um, are set guidelines. The product standard is the set of guidelines that, that governs the use of the, the product. For example safety standards or activities or processes. So what is the standard of use that the product should be used under? What are the guidelines for its use? Should it be used if, uh, if, if it's a very damp environment? Should it be used uh, in situations where perhaps there is limited ventilation? Or What exactly are the guidelines? These should be clearly stated. Standards are regulatory and must follow policies and procedures. For example, policies and procedures in customers' complaints. What if a customer complains about the product? What is the procedure? What is the, the standard that the customer can expect? What complaints are legitimate and what complaints uh, are, are spurious? How is that decided? What's the warranty period? 
um, what is the support given to the customers who buy the product? So the product quality is established through standards and policies. Once the standards are agreed and set out, those in a sense determine the quality of the product. Now the customers thinking of the product will understand what the standards are, what they're, what they're likely to uh, experience, uh, what they can expect, and that determines the quality. So it's, it's in a sense, that's a statement of the quality associated with the product. Now meeting objectives. Well, objectives are necessary in order to develop products to customer requirements. Uh, it's important to have a set of objectives to to say that the product is safe it's it's an attractive product it meets uh, design standards current design standards it uh, it has good functionality it's reliable it will be expected to last for so many years under normal usage so these are the objectives that that are that are set out and these uh, will uh, conform to the customer requirements and customers expectations if the product is going to be successful. Objectives help management allocate resources, deploy staff, organize activities in order to efficiently produce uh, uh, services that are going to be attractive to the, the customer. So it's important that the management have sufficient resources for backup, for customer, for after sales services, for customer liaison, uh, who can efficiently produce the product, deliver it on time to the required standard, the required quality, and they can meet their own documentation in terms of standards, that they are not remiss in offering a product which does not conform to what they said the product would be. So to that end the management know what the resources uh, required are. The management must understand that in order to meet the standards that they're setting for the product a certain envelope of resources are required in terms of personnel, machinery, distribution, logistics, accountancy, marketing, after sales and so on. And the management must ensure that those are in place because they are the product. It's not just the physical product, it's all of the services that go with the product that make the total customer experience. Product development uh, objectives focus on productivity ratios, product completion within a time frame and quality standards. It's very difficult to measure productivity ratios and this is discussed elsewhere in other videos but, uh, but the management should have some idea about how long does it take to make the product, uh, what is the testing and the quality assurance uh, systems that are in place, uh, what's the the time framework for the production of the product meeting to meet those quality standards. Um, so it's important that the management understand what's required in making the product and it's particularly important in the context of a new product that's going to bear the company's name. The new product should be carefully researched to ensure that there is a market so that the company is not embarrassed by making a product that's failed. So there should be good research into the product to see that there is a market for it, uh, to understand what the customer requirements are and to integrate those into the, the standards associated with the product and ensure that there is uh, sufficient or there are sufficient resources within the organization to meet those standards and to deliver the product within the time frame set and to do so in a cost effective manner. So it's a very complex process. You can see there are many parts to be taken into account. Objectives help management control operations 
and ensure policies and standards have been met. Well, having agreed to, to make the product or having decided to make the product, the objectives must be clearly set. What are the objectives of each section of the organisation? Who is responsible for uh, the production uh, within that particular section? What's the time scale? What, what are the resources required within each section? What are the objectives of the section? So the management needs to control the whole process to bring it to fruition, to bring the product to market. So it's important that the standards are set right throughout the organisation and there is accountability that individual managers are named as responsible for particular processes so that it's the, the, the management who are who are tasked with delivering the product are able to know where there are shortfalls or there are issues. Objectives can be measured against performance criteria performance measures, production, quality, reliability, employee performance. It's not always the case that it's in a sense calculated precisely. It might be very rough indications but uh, if the particular department is well resourced, uh, has modern machines, a trained workforce, uh, then expectations can be placed on that department to meet the requirements of producing the product within a certain time scale. So the objectives in a sense can be measured. The, the management know how long roughly it's going to take. But after a product is in production for some time of course these estimates can be refined. The objectives can be the quantity or the cost or the time or the quality. So uh, the objectives can be set out under four broad headings. Quantity produced, the cost of production, the time scale it takes and the quality. Let's look at these in a little more detail. We we'll start with the quantity objectives. Quantitative objectives measure output performance how many units can be output from a particular section per day or per week or per month? How many come off the, the production process? This could be processing it through an office, going through various layers of expertise within an office. It could be a service that is, that is the product. But how long does it take to get through the, the various parts, the various production parts? and what's the quantity that can be produced. Performance can be measured for employees, teams and departments. It may be possible to measure the output of a particular worker or it may be that the workers have to work in teams so what's the output of a particular team of workers, a group of workers working collaboratively on a project or indeed what's the output of a department so it depends on how involved management need to be with the department. Does it look at the overall performance of the department, uh, relying on the departmental manager to bring about efficiency, or does it look within the department to the employees or the teams within the department? It depends on how, how much hands-on the senior management want to be. Objectives can be based on sales revenue, manufacturing output, production output, numbers of deliveries. So the output from the department can be looked at in different ways. Uh, output that's produced which should go for sales. The output produced should not be batched up and put into the stores. That's idle capital. So how much output is produced? Uh, how efficiently is it produced? Does it meet the time scale set by the customer, the customer requirements? Uh, how many deliveries can be made in, in a week, let's say? Now the cost objectives, well cost objectives are associated with budgets, actual cost against planned costs. Uh, 
So it may be that uh, a department is given a budget and out of that budget it must produce so many uh, products. So the budget would be to pay salaries, wages and salaries, for operators within the department. It may also be uh, a budget which includes some uh, element of capital costs. It may be it includes the power requirements of the department. How much electricity does the department use? Um, what other items does it use uh, in addition to these? For example, specialised clothing or uh, health and safety equipment or whatever else it uses. So the function of the departmental manager then is to to spend wisely to ensure that the actual expenditure is in line with the planned expenditure. Cost objectives are important as they help estimate expenditure and is associated with output objectives. So a department is given a budget to produce and it produces so many items per week then it's possible to work out the, the average cost of production for each item that came from the department with that budget. So it's, it's then possible to calculate the average cost of each item produced. The objectives can be measured by total cost, the cost per unit uh, and percentage usage. So it's possible to, to say that um, certain amounts of output cost so much. That would be the total cost uh, in terms of how much was spent within the departmental budget. But it could be that the department produces more items uh, perhaps on certain occasions and less on others because perhaps key personnel are away from work or uh, key personnel were taken away because capital broke down or capital had to be replaced. So it's possible to work out the, the cost per unit. The department still used up some of its budget and output fell. So the average unit cost increased. So it's possible to work out cost per unit, the average cost of production. Time objectives. Well, time objectives measure completion performance. Setting deadlines for production completion is important as it gives direction. So when jobs are issued within companies, there should be a time scale associated. They're not just issued out and said, produce whenever. Customers are waiting at the end. Customers have expectations of receiving the products in a reasonable time scale. So it's important that each task has a time scale associated. A reasonable time scale, one that uh, is achievable, one that's been worked out by the organization that can be delivered. So each department perhaps the departments are in sequence, they, they take work one from the next until the, the job is completed. But they know when the handover date is because it's written on the job. And the handover date is achievable, it's realistic. Planning and scheduling helps management identify activities and employee roles and responsibilities. If there are issues in timing within a department, then the department needs to be looked at. Senior management needs to focus on, the, on that particular department and see why is it the department can't meet the deadlines. Is it poor capital equipment, poor training for the operators? Perhaps the management of the department is weak and can't organise it properly. So planning and scheduling the whole process of planning and scheduling focuses on the department. It sheds light on what's happening within the department. Is the department meeting the time objectives that are required? Time objectives ensure each stage of a product is completed within the set time frame. So having time objectives 
is good discipline. The job arrives, it's, the manager is told when the job should be completed and it should move to the next department or move to the dispatch or move to wherever it has to go to next. So the manager knows it should be out by that stage. And that means that uh, project management can ensure that the work process is continuous. It flows from one department to the next or it flows from one department to dispatch to the customer and it meets the customer's requirements. So time objectives can be used to ensure efficiency and smooth operation right throughout the organization. Quality objectives, well quality objectives ensure that the organization maintain high standards for their products and services. Now by high standards it means meeting customer expectations, even surpassing customer expectations. And this could be in terms of design, functionality, price, delivery, aftercare service. Quality objectives focus on setting quality standards. What can the customer expect from the organization? What can it expect if it purchases the product? What are the standards by which the organization will will deliver this product, will sell the product, will deliver the product? What are the standards and what will the customer uh, understand by the standards? Will, will they understand that the standards will be met in full, that they're not mere aspirations, they're, they are hard and fast standards that the organization will honor. So for example if uh, the organization says if the product breaks down within the first six months they will be it'll be replaced the following day. Is that aspirational? Is that what they, they try to do or is that what they will actually do? So what are the standards? Implementing policies and procedures to ensure quality standards are met. It's important that the organization factors in uh, quality procedures to ensure that the product is good quality and that the, the name of the organization is enhanced through, its, through the product, through its sales, through word of mouth, to, uh, through the perception that the customers develop about the company through the usage of the product. So the company should implement policies and procedures to ensure that quality standards are met. And then monitoring and controlling production and actual quality. It's important that quality runs through the organization. It may be a type of total quality management that is being implemented. But it's important that raw materials are not wasted through bad workmanship or faulty production techniques because that is a waste not just of the raw materials but of all of the services that have gone into the product up to that point. So it's important that the quality runs through the organization and the quality comes off the end and dispatched to the customer is a good quality product one that meets the standards that are set and that are understood by the purchaser. Taking quality control when standards drop below um, expectations. It's important that the organization gets involved. If the quality of the product falls then it's important that the, the company becomes involved with why the quality has fallen, why the reputation of the product uh, is not held in high esteem within the, the marketplace. How, what can it do to rectify this? What remedial measures can be put in place? Why did it happen in the first place? So it's important that expectations are met. In fact, uh, most books on the area and most 
most thinking in this area would suggest that expectations should be exceeded. Customer expectations should be exceeded. The product should be better than what the customers thought. So those are some ideas about product and service specification and development. Um, again, this class fits in with several other classes in this area, um, other videos and other readings, so it's important that you see this class as supporting other videos in the area. That's all we're going to deal with here, so let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching.